Hey, it's Dr. Remka, and we're going to go over a little bit more um, information of, let me move some of that light. I'm just trying to work this out as, there we go, maybe that's a little better. Um, a little bit more about mitochondria and ultimately how to make more energy. Now, here we are in the M1, the master's course, and we know this is really all about recreating charge, how to increase your electromagnetic potential through electrical ion gradients. You're learning a lot about what's going on with many different systems all coming down to the mitochondria. However, I'm giving you some big picture things, but I also want to give you some little tips, tricks, Hacks, right? We have lots of modalities and therapies, some arranging from devices that you can get uh, to large systems. Uh, then I want to give some simple, other easy things. So let's do a quick review. I'm not going to talk about signaling molecules, right? So I know if you're in the master's course, you know there's going to be more things in this these pictures that that I'm, I'm not having in here, right? We're not gonna talk about the electrons right now, really. We're not talking about um, hydrogen and, and the proton pumps and, and nitric oxide, what oxygen, we're not talking about any of this kind of stuff, hydroxyl radicals, we're just keeping it a little simple. So, oh yeah, so for those of you who graduated and are in here, it should be a simple review. Uh, for those of you who are the right in it, the thick of it, just add the other pieces that you're learning onto here. So it's, it's just talking about one small piece that I've never talked to you about, something that helps actually make ATP. This will be one of two videos. Uh, I'll showcase one um, molecule, one thing, in the next video, I'm going to talk about another molecule, okay? And how they're playing into making more energy because we're all really looking to have more ATP. This is the energy currency of your body, right? Energy and ATP. So we're going to go over ways to help you make more ATP. Quick review. What is ATP? Adenosine triphosphate. That means tri means three. There's a phosphate, a phosphate, a phosphate. A little bit of a kind of a picture of what does it look like? Adenosine with three phosphates. These are bonds. We can move these things. If we take it a one away, if I remove one, it becomes ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Keep going. If I remove two, it becomes adenosine monophosphate, AMP. So you know when you see those letters, that's all that's happening. And what keeps happening, the power of that we do this, every time we cleave one off, we create an explosion of energy just in that reaction. So like, boom, free energy that the cell can use to do things. Boom, free energy. The cell can use it to do things, okay? Then also when you add it on, boom, there's energy, right? So it's the adding and cleaving thing, taking away that creates this energy. It's why this has so much energy. Take away, boom, 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 energy, and energy, 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 all right? We're gonna talk about a supplement you can take. Very, very affordable, creatine monohydrate. I'm not gonna break down all the types of creatine that are out there, there's no reason for it simply go with the old basic creatine monohydrate. It's the most affordable and it's the most researched out of all any new fancy form. Someone is telling you is better or more absorbable. Do not believe it and just go with the basic. Go with this. And there are doctors all over YouTube telling you to take other forms. Do not listen to it. Go with creatine monohydrate, okay? I take pure encapsulations on my full script, okay? So, what is creatine? Okay, you've probably heard of it. It is made of three amino acids. And as you know, amino acids are their building blocks of proteins. You eat the protein to break it apart into amino acids, right? An essential macronutrient. 
And you know, some of these amino acids of the 20 amino acids, roughly half are essential and roughly half are non-essential. Essential means you have to eat it. You cannot make it. Non-essential means you don't have to eat it because you can make it. However, you have to be able to have enough of the essential amino acids to make your non-essential amino acids. Let's also remember that, okay? So creatine in itself is not essential because we can make it. It's primarily made in your liver and your kidneys. It's primarily stored in big stores in your muscles. So people think of creatine as a muscle supplement. It is not a muscle supplement. Creatine is an energy producer. Creatine is an energy supplement. Creatine produces energy. And you know, you know where are the most mitochondria? First the brain, right? Heart, skeletal muscle. So we know these are our big places that take a lot of energy. So they need a lot of ATP. So they use a lot of creatine. So it makes sense people think of it as a muscle thing, okay? But they're missing something, so a couple pieces. Here's the thing, it is not essential because we make it, liver and the kidneys. However, but these little stars, the three amino acids, glycine, arginine, and methionine, right? Methionine is an essential amino acid. So if you don't get enough of that in your diet, you will struggle potentially, probably to make enough creatine. Methionine is that powerful amino acid that you learned about in the 3R course that is the primary methyl donor and it's the most abundant in animal meat. So if anybody has a methylation issue, we supplement them with L-methionine. We give them that amino acid. And then we all saw that that goes through the methylation cycle and becomes SAMe, which then is that methyl donor that's recycled all over the place. So methionine is what you eat. The body turns that into SAMe. This is critical for methylation. This is why anybody with any methylation and genetic SNPs, which is 70% of the population, 70 to 85% has some variant of a, of a methylation mutation or genetic SNP. It's just the personality. Only 15% are actually totally have none. So it's about 85%. Um, you really need to make sure you're getting enough methionine, right? And how many SNPs you have, right? I've done some of this with you guys on the lab reviews and explaining what some of this is you need even more methionine and you certainly do not want to become a vegetarian and worst case scenario, uh, a vegan, you will get mental health goes down and physical health and cancer risk goes up incredibly because of that. So you have to remember, even though we make it, it has methionine in it, which is an essential amino acid. And now arginine is a semi um, uh, essential. So kids, you know, and adults are a little bit different. So this sometimes is selectively essential. So just be aware of that. Glycine um, is uh, non-essential, but it's often lacking in people nowadays because they're not getting enough bone broth, joints, skin, animal skin, and it's collagen. So it's in the skin and the joints and the bones. It's the primary amino acid that's super high in collagen and bone broth. Collagen and bone broth, remember, don't have enough methionine, so they are not a complete protein. They don't have that. So this is why having both really completes uh, the diet, right? So you get your good amino acid profile. You have a, like a really balanced uh, ratio of amino acids. So that's an aside for all of you who've taken my courses, right? Creatine monohydrate, the name alone is just creatine plus a water molecule. So you know it's mono, one, hydrate, water. So learn, you know, some of these words don't, aren't really magical and scary. You just break down what the pieces mean, all right? But big lesson to understand, creatine is an energy producer. And I'm going to show you how it makes ATP. So you might want to consider adding it to your routine.
All right, remember, one of the big places that's using a lot of ATP is your brain. The brain is a very small organ in relation to how much skeletal muscle I have, um, in relation to how much adipose tissue I have, which remember, fat is an endocrine organ. So skin is not your largest organ. It's probably your skeletal muscle. Depending on your size, it could actually be your adipose tissue. Uh, but it uses 20% of all the ATP in your body every day just to stay alive. Now you can actually burn through a little bit more. So the more cognitive tasks you're doing, you really are using AT more ATP. Thinking and problem solving takes more energy than not. That's, that's real. So you can feel really tired uh, in, if you're a CPA in tax season because your brain is being required to do way more work and use way more ATP than is required to um, just hang out with friends or uh, do, a, do an easy crossword puzzle or color or paint, okay? Now, the muscles are also using a ton of ATP and I mentioned that. So these are two big areas that creatine can help with. It is uh, helps with brain performance. It is a, really a peptide, a considered a, so those three amino acids are put together, you guys, that makes it a peptide, right? You put, so we have amino acids, single, put them together, it makes a peptide. Put a more, can be called a polypeptide, a little bit bigger, we call that a protein. It's all just kind of how big it is and what we call it. So this is what goes on, right? Remember the mitochondria. We've driven, you know, we have an outer membrane, inner membrane, but we're not gonna talk about all oh, what's really happening, even though I know you you refresh your memory, all these things. So the mitochondria makes ATP, right? Here we have our adenosine and our three phosphate groups. To turn this into the ADP, which is happening all the time, remember we take away a phosphate. Okay, and there's your free energy spark. It's like <laughs> electricity, a spark of energy, bam, go do something. It's creatine that comes in here and takes a phosphate. Okay, so then it makes, it's called creatine phosphate. So then it floats around and, and goes somewhere it needs to go. And then it finds an ADP and it says, oh, let me give you a phosphate and turns it back to ATP. So there's this recycling that's going on all over the time, all over the place. Creatine, taking away phosphates, becoming creatine phosphate, traveling somewhere, finding an ADP, saying, oh, you want this back? Giving it back, <clears throat> spark of energy in making that bond back to ATP. That's what it kind of looks like. Creatine takes away, becomes creatine phosphate, creatine phosphate puts back on ATP. And it's, it's this ripping apart that, it, that releases energy. Give you an example um, of like cost benefit and what goes on. Five grams of creatine, you need to eat two and a half pounds of steak to get five grams of creatine. Okay. Five grams is actually a bigger dose than any of you need. So I'm giving you an idea. Um, th there's good brands with tons in the full script, but that rounded scoop is four grams. And that would be the max dose I would give when we get to that part. Okay. The only people that need to go up to five grams are like heavy weight lifters, competitive cross trainers, really, really, really fit people. Okay. So but that gives you an idea. All right. And it's super affordable. Like this will be, a, that's about a dollar and a quarter for that serving versus two and a half pounds of steak is could be 30, 40 bucks, depending on what you're eating. Right. So this is what kind of what it's, it does a few things. So I talked about muscle, I talked about the brain, but I'm gonna talk about the muscle first because we'll talk about it. Well, the more you use your muscle creatine, creatine up in the body, the less you'll have available for your brain. Okay. Not saying not to exercise because it helps, but I'm trying to explain how when you supplement with it. So during exercise, creatine does a couple things to make exercise uh, to help make the exercise easier for you. So it does two things in, in particular. Um, creatine phosphate, which I just described, remember that's adding, that's making ATP. It's literally like instantly throwing the phosphates onto the 
ADP giving you more ATP, energy, 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 energy. So it's an incredibly fast source of more ATP, super wicked fast, way faster than the mitochondria kind of making it because it just keeps, it just finds ADP. It finds the, the used ones and keeps donating wicked fast ATP. Okay. So we want to increase stores of creatine phosphate in the muscle. So your exercise, you can keep going longer, right? That's how you do it. So it's just it's super fast replacement of it. It's the fastest ATP replacement out there. Another form of creatine called creatine kinase actually helps buffer the hydrogen ions that are coming off the cells that are making you acidic. That's what lactic acid is. So it buffers that. So creatine also decreases soreness and pain from lactic acid. So it lets you do more reps of something, put more time into something, makes more energy and decreases the lactic acid pain, decreases that load, right? That's how it helps um, people perform better and why it's known as kind of a muscle thing. It's not, it's an energy thing. It's really doing, it will do nothing for your muscles if you don't exercise. It's not doing anything. It's just, it's just potential energy waiting for you to do something. Okay. It's helping its potential energy, storing it for, are we ready? Okay. Now what it also does is it hydrates the muscle. It helps it retain water. Some people will say, oh, creatine, it's retain. It makes you bloat or retain water. It doesn't help make you bloat. It doesn't make you retain water. It makes only the muscle retain some water, which makes it look a little bigger and be, be like more defined. You're like plump and cut. So it actually helps with the aesthetic of the muscle, but it's truly helping hydrate. It's monohydrate. It puts water and you want hydration in the muscle. That's a good thing. Okay. So that's beneficial. That's a benefit of it. It's not a downside. Okay. Something we need to be aware of is that 30% of people who take, as far as the tests and the research study uh, show is that 30% are non-responders, meaning they're not going to get the increase in reps or the increase in time when they work out and you might not get as big of a brain boost and we'll talk about that why that is is what because we're thinking that they had very high creatine stores already so there there was no more room to add and we'll get into that so well let me, i'll say it here you store most people on average have 3.5 grams of creatine per pound of skeletal muscle stored. That's the average person. That's the average number. However, we can store up to five grams per pound of skeletal muscle. So the goal with using supplementation is to go from, you might be at three grams, you might be at two and a half. I don't know, the average is three and a half, right? Is to push you to your max of your body's capability so you can carry five grams of creatine phosphate, you know, and creatine and other forms and kinase and everything total per pound skeletal muscle. So you have more energy producing capabilities to make ATP at on demand, on demand. Okay. The people who respond the most all the time in the studies are vegans and vegetarians and people on a low protein diet, because you make creatine from amino acids one or two of which are essential, depending on your age, but methionine is absolutely essential and it's really primarily found in meat. So if you're not getting it, you, there's can be extraordinary benefits. So every vegan vegetarian or someone watching, you know, trying to do low protein should be taking creatine monohydrate, in my opinion, as a minimum of what they should be doing, okay? And we'll get into that. So again, if we have muscle effects, you must exercise for it to do any work on the muscles. It doesn't just cause muscle growth on its own. Absolutely not, because it is designed to help you make ATP to put in more work to get a better muscle growth response. That's what you're actually going for. It won't do it for you. Uh, oh, it also takes typically three to four weeks to saturate the muscles to get you to that level. You will see talk of loading or not loading don't load, don't worry about it. We don't need to worry about increasing gastrointestinal distress. Um, it, it's, just, it's just not worth it. Just you're gonna take it every single day 
And over that time, three to four weeks, you, you know, some people might do it in two, depending on where they are. We're going to load their body up to that sweet spot of hopefully four or five grams per pound of skeletal muscle. Okay. So real quick, like reviewing and adding a couple things into it. And remember, no matter what, your mitochondria, basically food sources come to it. You got three food sources that will show up to knock on the door of this mitochondria. And we talk about metabolic flexibility being, can the mitochondria consume any of these at any time on demand with ease, right? And those are glucose, which is sugar, which is blood sugar, right? Everybody should be able to do that comfortably. The other ones are ketone bodies, which are made in primarily in your liver and from a breaking down fat, all right? The other one are free fatty acids, another form of fat, much smaller that get broken apart into loose little things. So we got three forms, three ways that something comes inside the mitochondria and it goes through that inner membrane. And each one of those has a different efficiency of how much ATP they can make, but they all just simply make ATP. That's all we're doing is turning that ATP. Okay. That's really the gasoline. This is, so you eat stuff to get these things. You get a breakdown, all kinds of things. And we go into the difference and the benefits of being able to burn fat versus only being able to burn sugar. And there's all kinds of things and brain benefits and health benefits to that. But just keeping it simple, people, okay, it, doing all of them all the time. That's what should be happening. Okay. All they're doing is making ATP. Forget about the signal molecules and all that other stuff and, and the structured water. We know it's doing that too. That's just missing from this piece. But we're focusing on here. Remember, ATP, we have three phosphate molecules. Creatine comes along, steals a phosphate, becomes creatine phosphate. It's that boom explosion of ripping away, pow, energy. And that's how you build energy. That's how you get energy. That's how things happen. That's how you heal. Okay. Uh, creatine phosphate, then can, it goes, they go other places. You know, we have inside the mitochondria, we go into the cytoplasm, we go other places. This is what's happening. Go, oh, what's, oh, I see an ADP. He needs some love. Give it a phosphate and boom, right? It goes back to creatine and then it goes somewhere else and it steals a phosphate. That's what it's doing. It's just moving phosphates around. It's like a shuttle bus for phosphates. And every time it plugs something in, spark of energy, just energy, energy, pow, pow, take and plug. That's all it's doing. Okay. Creatine, creatine on hundred. Now let's talk about dosing. So I talk a lot about muscles and because it's super used, most popular, probably uh, bodybuilding, right? Bodybuilders have been in using this, but recently I was, it was an interesting thing where it kind of even left my mind at what a powerful brain peptide this is. And uh, being reminded, you all want to get super fancy. Like, it's way too fancy with all oh, cerebral lysine, VPC, instead of let's go real basic. Let's start at the bottom, creating dirt cheap, super effective, super safe. It's probably the most well-researched supplement in the history of all supplements, by the way. So it's a cognitive enhancer. It enhances brain performance big time. So let's talk about the dosing around that. So if you are sedentary, you don't do any physical activity. This may be one of the best brain per performing enhancing uh, supplements you could be taking and you don't need a lot if you're not doing any activity because the muscles aren't being asked to do a ton. Look at something like one to two grams a day. So for someone like my mother at 74 years old, I'm gonna shoot for like two grams a day and hoping whatever she does do a little bit of the muscles, like it'll, you know, that would be a potent brain peptide right here. Now, if you want the brain effects, you want more brain energy, more energy to do cognitive tasks, 
In particular, this is known for increasing memory. In fact, there is even a study where they used vegans um, and vegetarians, I believe it's Royal Bee Society. I think it was vegetarians, both vegan and vegetarian. They increased, it was a five or six week study of giving four or five grams a day. They increased their IQ scores by 20%. So that's just telling you the power of being deficient in this. Brain performance dramatically declines. Giving it back helps brain performance because you saw what it does, ATP, and the brain is an energy hog. 20% of all the ATP your body is making is going to be used by your brain, right? And so the more stressed out or the more problem solving you have to do, the more you need creatine. Now. It doesn't work like instantly. You'll feel it probably within a few days, but we want to remember there's that kind of saturation loading time that the system's going to like depletion areas will use. But going with one to two grams a day, if you do no activity, you will start to just have more mental energy and not be so tired at the end of the day. Just notice you'll feel better because you had more ATP to solve problems. In particular, um, this works pretty astonishingly on the hippocampal, hippocampus, hippocampal, camel, uh, bleh, that's where I'm at. Not a camel, but <laughs> the hippocampus is uh, for memory. And we really want to increase um, nerve cells there. And I'll give you, we'll talk about that, what happens in the hippocampus, how you can stack, but this is working there and you can add a few things of brain performance and memory right? Feeling if you're having some decline on this, especially with aging, or you've been through some illness or chemo brain, things like that. I would definitely look at stacking things that are also known to promote uh, nerve growth in the hippocampus specifically. Human growth hormone does that. There are some natural homeopathic versions of that. There are also peptides, uh, peptide injections that will help with that, but just understand the concept of why you would stack that with this. Uh, lion's mane and reishi are both mushrooms that in particular go after uh, the hippocampus and they affect a different pathway, BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and um, another nerve growth factor, and I'm blanking on it, but that's my bad. So just know that that's, if we're looking for brain enhancement, you might want to stack. All right. Now, if you want the brain boost, you're like, I need that brain boost. I want to take it as a brain peptide. Um, and I am doing some, some exercise and I'm doing moderate. I want look at about three grams a day because you're going to burn your, it's going to the creatine phosphate stores kinase in the muscle are going to be getting used and you want enough left over for sure to get to the brain. If you want the brain benefits, with this and, and you're doing intense exercise, you're gonna look at three to four grams a day. There's gonna be some extreme, you know, the bodybuilding community, I'll talk about five grams a day. I'll, you know, almost nobody in my courses, you're women and no one's doing it to that level, you do not need five grams a day. There can be some gastrointestinal distress that people might feel a little bit um, in feeling like, water retention because you're just not used to suddenly when you're working out, you're going to see like a puff, like what, am I actually getting bigger? That's a good thing because you're bringing hydration. The body will, will, will settle that out. But just in the beginning, I don't think you need to load like 20 grams a day. It just increases the, I, the chance that you might have a little bit of constipation or diarrhea. So not necessary. So three to four grams a day if you're doing that. Now this comes in a four gram scoop. Um, I just do a four gram scoop, basically. It says heaping scoop. So if it's flat, I'm getting three or three and a quarter. If it's four, you know, it's right in there. I'm in that three to four gram range. I'm not even working on this hard, but I'd rather take a little bit more and put myself on the safe side. Uh, give you an idea. There's 62 servings of four grams in here. So that's two months worth. If you're taking the, the two grams a day, this thing will last you four months. If you're doing one, which I really don't think maybe you should all be, you know, whatever. That's, what is that? That's eight months, right? So that will be end up costing you like 20 cents a serving, right? So up to the four, it's like about a dollar serving, right? So it's, I think it's 50 bucks, 40 bucks, something like that, okay? 
So in the world of brain peptides, energy enhancing ATP producing things, very, 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 very affordable and super, super safe. So that's where we're at. I, I, if you're looking for a, the ability to make more ATP in an affordable way, creatine monohydrate uh, is a very, very effective way. And when I had it, uh, the great reminder from a physician friend of mine is like, it's a brain peptide and people forget about it about it. They want to go right to super fancy and you need to start at the basic, right? And you've been with me through 3R and we've gone over neurotransmitters, understanding sometimes you don't, we don't need to get, I need to look at how's the GABA, how's the serotonin, how's the dopamine, right? Let's start with the basics before we have to get all this bizarre stuff on board. We start with amino acids. We're starting with amino acids and protein primarily. That's what you're made of. If I get the amino acids and the things that they make and how they affect brain performance and energy performance dialed in, everything takes care of itself downstream. And we don't need so many bizarre things and bizarre superfoods, all right? So it creates a monohydrate, brain, muscle health because it's an energy producing molecule with all about ATP. All right. See you guys.